Hey there, everybody. It's Pastor Jason. Happy New Year. Our daily devotion, we're in Revelation 10, a short little chapter. Here we're going to see the principal actors dealing directly with John as he's trying to write this stuff down in his vision. And um, it's always interesting to kind of see those, that, those very personal interactions when the scripture gets very personal. Let's read and we'll pray and we'll get started. Father, thank you for your time. Uh, we thank you for the time spent in your word. Lord, we thank you for we thank you for 2020. Um, a lot of terrible things that have happened, yet, Father, we know you are in control and you none of it surprised you. Lord, may we thank you for the ways that you've blessed us this year. And may we look to you and your word as 2020 begin 2021 begins. In your name. Amen. All right, let's do it. Revelation 10, verse 1. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, wrapped in a cloud with a rainbow over his head, and his face was like the sun, and his legs like pillars of fire. He had a little scroll open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and called out with a loud voice like a lion roaring. When he called out, the seven thunders sounded, and when the seven thunders had sounded, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. And the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and what is in it, and the earth and what is in it, and the sea and what is in it, that there would be no more delay. But in the days of the trumpet call to be sounded by the seventh angel, the mystery of God would be fulfilled, just as he announced to his servants the prophets. Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me again, saying, Go take the scroll that is open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. And I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. It was as sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. And I was told, you must again prophesy about many peoples and nations and languages and kings. So, Revelation 10, just by... We have a little bit of an explanation. Uh, it's difficult to explain when you look at uh, commentary and so forth. It just depends upon who you read. Some people would see that angel who's standing on both the sea and the land at the same time. Older commentators would say that is Jesus. Other commentators would say, no, this is just another angelic being. He's He actually, the, the being refers to Jesus. So... It's difficult. It's a toss-up. Like a lot of revelation, we have to just use our best judgment. And it's okay. It's okay. So when we look at uh, the second half and the eating of the scroll, you know, we think to ourselves, that's odd. Usually you just read a scroll, right? And here he's being told to eat it. And this parallels some scripture you find in Ezekiel, where Ezekiel was told to eat a scroll as well and then go prophesy against the kingdom in Ezekiel's two and three. What do we take what do we take in from this? What do we take in from all of this? That the end is coming, right? And here just before the seventh trumpet sounds, he's the whether it's Christ or an angelic being, and he says um, that there would be no more delay and that um, that that trumpet's going to sound and that's going to be it. And is that the the last, no more delay in terms of, you know, the judgments and things that are happening? That could be. Could it be that time itself will end and that'll be it? That could be as well. So it's up, for, it's up to us. It's up to you and me, you know, as you... As you study and uh, search the word out, I like the word investigate. You know, when you investigate 
a topic in, in the Word, it's good to read different points of view. I think that's why I like the word investigate better than study. When we look at, you know, oh, I'm going to study on this. We tend to read the same authors. Once you get some spiritual maturity behind you, you kind of fall in line with certain authors as they and you read how they have uh, how they have come to deduce certain things in, in scripture. I like the word investigate though because what that does that means I'm going to take in a breadth of knowledge and even hear from points that maybe are counter to my own proclivity, right? I might I might have a certain leaning one way or the other, but I want to also be open-minded enough to kind of hear what does someone else who's biblically trained, you know, what do they have to say about these topics? And Revelation, there's all sorts of things we can kind of toss up. And it's it's just up to us to kind of use our best judgment and the, the knowledge and the head work that we've used in the past. Takeaways from Revelation 10? I would encourage you, have a consistent diet of the word of the Lord, right? Maybe you're not taking your Bible and slathering barbecue sauce on it to eat it, but are you spending time in the word? Are you enjoying time with the Lord? Is your relationship growing and flourishing? May your investigation into the word of God drive you to a closer relationship with him. With that, I hope you are blessed. Be a blessing in 2021. And I hope I'll see you tomorrow with Revelation 11.